So here we have sunk both of these areas. We know that they will collapse well. I've opened them a little bit more so that I can get the rest of the collapse to accomplish easily. Here's the next thing to look for. This point where all of these creases intersect. This needs to be pushed in so that the right side valley crease and the left side valley crease will move independently. And this is how it's to work. You're going to activate those valley creases and then look carefully now to the other side where that unique petal is going to have to relayer itself this way. So you can get inside and get that going. Now these two arms can be brought in. You can see that this is wrapping around the petal. And let's go back to the outside to see what needs to happen here. We need to make sure that these areas that have been sunk collapse. You see how they're folding back inside here and there. And look at the way the layering is happening around here and around the back. Once all of this is going well, you can flatten the entire shape. And this is one of my orchid bases. I've designed dozens of orchid blossoms from this base. You may discover many on your own. This flap will become the lip of the orchid, which you see here. And because it's unique, it's to be folded differently than the others. And here's how we accomplish that. We're going to make a mountain folded edge of this crease, pivoting up here at the top. And we're going to align a point along this folded edge with this corner over here on the left. It's going to be an inside reverse fold similar to those we've done before, but the angle is different. You can see the alignment goes to the corner down here and then layering over the other half flat. This will become the lip. Rotate the paper 90 degrees so that the slender part is on the left. Let's look at that orchid blossom again. These three larger areas are called petals. And in between the petals are sepals. There are three. Notice that they are narrower than the petals on this model. We're going to have to narrow the sepals on this origami piece. The sepals we've made so far are here at the top and another one at the bottom. The third one is hidden. We'll be dealing with that later. To begin with, we're going to fold the top sloping long edge on the left toward the center line, but not all the way to the center line. It's going to look like this. And the fold does go to the back end. You'll know that you've got the correct angle when you look inside to see that this valley crease will intersect perfectly with the length end of what you're working on here. So you're going to adjust this until you see that they intersect at this point like this. Then you've got the angle. So once we have this pivot point, we're going to use this valley crease to bring the top layer over. And then we can open a pocket, a cone-shaped pocket. We're going to squash fold this. So we're going to swivel the paper over, laying it flat, and making the folded edge end at the top corner here. So we've skinnied this side of that sepal. To do the other side, we have to turn a page. So grab all the paper that's associated with that structure, move it down and flat. Take the sloping edge, move it at an angle, copying the angle you've used on the other side. You'll see the intersection of the valley crease and the folded edge. We can lay that layer on top of the sepal. So we open the pocket, swivel, and flatten to make a nice clean shape. Return this 
sepal above and now take all of the lip petal paper up and we can skinny this sepal. So it's the same process. Narrow edge over until you have the intersection. And it's the same routine. Layer over, open a pocket, swivel squash. You can do the other side by turning the paper over and moving layers out of the way like this. No matter which way you handle the paper, the routine is the same. So now we have the second sepal skinnied. Let's stop for a moment and reorganize the layers, make sure that we have everything in the right place. We have two sepals that have been skinnied, and when I did that, I folded these layers over. So I'm going to open this up. This is going to be the third sepal. It hasn't been inside reverse folded yet. I'd like for you to see that over here on this side we have the petal that will become the lip. That's folded in half and it's up here. This layering with the petal folded in half up here, your sepals there and there, and you can see that corner. This layering corresponds to your diagram number 32. So you're going to turn the paper over and upside down like this. This is corresponding to diagram 33. We're going to form an inside reverse fold now and take this flap for a sepal like this and down to the bottom, folding a line like this and flatten. Now we can skinny this sepal just as we've done with the others. It's the same routine. So I've skinnied the third sepal. It used to be down here. I did this side, lifted it up. It was up here. And so I have two sepals at the top and the lip petal paper is down here at the bottom with a sepal upon the top of that. To make things work in the plan of an orchid, we're going to take this backmost sepal and bring it down so that it's on the other side of the lip petal. Now we have the right configuration. We have a top center sepal two flanking bottom ones, the paper in the middle for the lip, and then we also have petals that will form at the top right and left. Let's bring the petals out. We're going to begin by moving this petal that's on the top outward, but putting mountain folds that follow the folded edge here and the one you see here. It doesn't matter which one you do first, but sharply fold a mountain fold along those edges. You can valley fold the petal lengthwise right through the center like this. And you can see how that stands out. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Mountain fold sharply along the guiding folded edges here and there. So there's an upper and a lower folded edge for each of the two flanking petals. This next step is optional. Notice this crease line here and this flap. You can lock this layer behind the folded edge you see here. And in the diagrams, this is what we're doing. Now this builds up thicknesses, and if your paper is thick to begin with, you can omit that step. But I'm going to include it now. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Another locking step. We're going to take this corner flap 
and tightly fold it in to lock what could otherwise open up here. And it's to be done like this. You can take the raw edge right into the folded line inside. And that locks the paper here. We'll do the same thing on the other side. We're going to shape the front of this lip. There are many ways to do it, but this particular version uses this pocket here. And into that pocket, we will tuck this corner. Set it up first so that you're sure that the angle will give you a folded edge that stops here while allowing a remnant of that corner to tuck inside intersecting at the stopping point there. And that sets this angle. Do the same thing on the other side. And you can see what we've done here is shaped the upper part of the lip petal. Now let's work at the end of the lip petal. There are many ways to finish this, but one way, and this is the way the diagrams recommend, is to take the square corner of the lip petal and to mount and fold it over to the back, about like that. So we're folding that edge of the petal over and you can see the valley fold that's accomplished. There's the overlap. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Like this. We also need to overlap the bottom edges of the petals onto their associated sepals. Here is the lip of the orchid, and there are many ways that you could add features and embellishments. I'm going to show you the way that the diagrams indicate to inside reverse fold this bottom center line. So what you're going to do is grab that crease and turn it into a mountain, pulling it up inside like this, and then using these corners at the bottom as end guides, you're going to fold a valley fold on each side of that ridge. So now you have three creases, valley, mountain, valley. And there's often a little clef inside that bottom part of the lip. So we're going to inside reverse fold just a little bit here to approximate that. And there you see that little clef. We can now add shapely curving. If you need to wet your paper to get the shapeability improved, perhaps the paper's dried out by now, that's perfectly all right. But you can go ahead and add nice curves and be creative. At the center, you'll see what's called the column, which is found inside the petal. And this I often just crimp inside to move it downward a little bit. There's a crimp happening like this right inside. That lowers it into the lip a little bit deeper so that the top can close over. And then, of course, you may curl and embellish any 
of the sepals and petals outward inward you can look at live orchids or photographs of orchid plants and flowers to get an idea of how shapely the parts may be you can certainly be experimentally creative until you see what you like and then of course you'd let the flower dry completely and so here we have two finished blooms that are fully dried and all the tweaking has been done this yellow one is folded from taunt paper that was not colored green on the other side. The folding paper for our lesson we did for clarity. You do not need to color it on the other side, but fully dry. Look how resilient and long lasting the shape is and yet so graceful and flower like. Here is one that we folded from our handmade origami dough paper with iridescent luster pigments. And this one is a duo sheet. We had pasted two different sheets together, a green with the fuchsia color to make a back coated wet foldable paper. We hope you've enjoyed this etude, an orchid for Susie.